So positivity coaching, right? It's more than just fluffy sayings, and we're diving deep into that today. We're talking about how it can actually rewire your thinking, help you unlock your potential, all that good stuff. And the really cool part, this stuff is rooted in some serious history and backed by some pretty mind-blowing science. Yeah, it's not just about slapping on a happy face. There's real depth here. We'll be tracing positivity coaching all the way back to its roots, think ancient philosophies, and then we'll uncover how modern research backs up its incredible power. Okay, so let's unpack that a little. When you hear positivity coaching, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Because I think for a lot of people, it's just, oh, think happy thoughts, but it's got to be more than that, right? You're totally right. It's way more than that. The foundation here is positive psychology. It's about actively cultivating a resilient mindset. And it's not about just pretending negativity doesn't exist. We're talking about building genuine strengths like gratitude and optimism that actually change how you see and experience the world. So it's less about just slapping on a fake smile and more about building a foundation of positivity that can actually equip you to face challenges head on. Exactly. And get this, this isn't some new fad. This stuff goes way, way back, like ancient times. Now you've got me curious, how far back are we talking? Think Eastern philosophies, Buddhism, Taoism, Confucianism. For centuries, they've been emphasizing the importance of positive emotions and virtues. They were really onto something long before modern science caught up. Wow. I never really made that connection before. It's pretty amazing, right? And then fast forward a bit, you've got folks like Martin Seligman. He's a big name in positive psychology. He brought these concepts to the West. His work on learned optimism, groundbreaking. He showed that we can actually rewire our brains to be more optimistic. That title alone, learned optimism, it's powerful. Because I think some people feel like pessimism is just, you know, hardwired. Like that's just who they are. And that's where Seligman's ABC model comes in. He showed that it's not the difficult situation itself that determines how we feel and act. It's our beliefs about that situation. It's how we interpret it. Positivity coaching gives us the tools to challenge those sometimes limiting beliefs and create more empowering ones. So we have more control than we think, which I like. Oh, we absolutely do. And then you've got Barbara Fredrickson and her broaden and build theory. It's incredible. She discovered that experiencing positive emotions actually expands our thinking, our awareness, our ability to connect with others. It all broadens. Think about a time you felt pure joy. You were probably more open to new experiences, meeting new people, right? More likely to think outside the box. It's true. When I'm in a funk, all I want is the couch and the blanket. But when I'm feeling good, the possibilities seem endless. Exactly. Positive emotions open us up and they help us build resources, new skills, stronger relationships, those kinds of things. And all of that makes us more resilient. Okay, so it's not just about feeling good in the moment. It creates a ripple effect. There's real science behind this. There really is. And when we talk about the science of feeling good, we're talking measurable impact. For example, studies have shown that experiencing positive emotions can actually strengthen your immune system. Wait, seriously, how does that even work? There was this one study where people actively practiced gratitude for just two weeks and their white blood cell count significantly increased. Amazing, right? That is amazing. You know, I always thought of gratitude as a nice to have, but not necessarily a necessity. This changes things. It turns out that cultivating these positive emotions can have a real physical impact on our well-being. And it goes even further. Positivity coaching gives us tangible tools. We can rewire our thinking break free from those negative thought patterns that can hold us back. Okay, so let's talk tools. What's one example? How can people start to rewire their thinking? Visualization is huge. And it's not just about vaguely picturing what you want. I'm listening. It's about creating this vivid mental picture as if you've already achieved that goal. Imagine the sights, the sounds, how it feels, even the smells associated with that success. Make it real in your mind and your brain starts to believe it's possible. That's powerful. So you're basically tricking your mind into believing in your own success. Exactly. You're creating a mental blueprint that guides your thoughts, your beliefs, even your actions towards that outcome. And then there's affirmations and positive self-talk. It's about tuning into that inner voice, that running commentary, and choosing to be your own cheerleader instead of your own worst critic. Because let's face it, sometimes that inner critic is brutal. Oh, absolutely. But if we consistently give ourselves these positive messages, we can actually reprogram our subconscious mind. And that's incredibly powerful because our subconscious shapes so much of our thinking and our experiences, even if we don't realize it. It's like we're giving our brains a workout, training them for success instead of just hoping for the best. 
Exactly. And it's not just about us as individuals either. It scales up. Think about workplaces. You know how some places just have a different vibe. Oh, yeah, for sure. You can just feel it when you walk in. Right. And a lot of times that positive energy, it's intentional. Companies are incorporating positivity into their culture. And it's not just about keeping employees happy, although that's definitely a good thing. We're talking increased productivity, better communication, even higher employee retention rates. So it's not just some feel-good HR initiative. There are actual business benefits. Exactly. When employees feel valued, when they feel supported, they're more engaged, they're more creative, they're more invested in their work, and that all goes straight to the bottom line. It makes sense. Yeah. I mean, who wants to work in a negative environment? Nobody. And it goes beyond the workplace walls, too. When a company embraces this culture of positivity, it impacts everything. Customer service, leadership, even how the brand is perceived. Everybody wins. Okay, so we've talked about the positive impact on individuals, on entire companies even, but can this idea of positivity have a similar impact on, say, communities as a whole? Such a good question, and this is something I'm really passionate about. We're seeing more and more communities using positivity to address some big challenges. Things like crime, poverty, health disparities. It's pretty inspiring. That's amazing. But how does that actually play out? What are these communities actually doing? Well, there's a community in California that started a program teaching people positive communication skills. And get this, they saw a significant drop in neighborhood disputes and people were way more engaged in their community. Then you've got a town in Michigan. They focused on building resilience in young people. They used after-school programs that really emphasize creativity, teamwork, self-expression, the results. Youth crime went down, and school performance actually improved. Wow. It's incredible to think that promoting something as, I don't know, seemingly simple as positivity can have that kind of impact. It really shows you how interconnected everything is. When individuals embrace a more positive mindset, it ripples outward. It affects their families, their communities, even the world. This is all so inspiring. But I can also see how it might feel overwhelming for someone just starting out. So for someone listening who's thinking, okay, this sounds great, but where do I even begin? Mm -hmm. What's one small step they can take today? That's a great question. And you're right, it can feel like a lot. But remember, even small changes can make a big difference. So if you're ready to explore this, Start by just noticing your self-talk. You mean that voice we all have in our heads. Exactly. Throughout the day, pay attention to your thoughts. Are they mostly positive or are they negative? Are you encouraging yourself or putting yourself down? Just becoming aware of that inner dialogue, that's a huge first step. It's like holding up a mirror to our own minds. Mm, yes. It really is. And once you're more aware of that self-talk, you can actually start to shift it. So let's say you catch yourself thinking, Ugh, I'm terrible at this. Try reframing that thought. Instead of being so hard on yourself, maybe say, you know what? I'm still learning and that's okay. Be your own cheerleader, not your own worst critic. I love that. Be kind to ourselves, something I think a lot of us could be better at. Absolutely. We all deserve that inner kindness. And the more we practice it, the more it will extend outward. It'll impact how we interact with everyone else. So we've talked about positivity's impact on individuals, workplaces, even entire communities. But earlier, you mentioned that this idea of positivity, it's deeply rooted in ancient philosophies. Can you tell us more about that connection? Definitely. If we look at traditions like Buddhism, Taoism, they put a lot of emphasis on certain virtues, things like inner peace, acceptance, compassion, mindfulness. And those same qualities, they're also central to positivity coaching. So while the language and the methods might be different, the core ideas are actually pretty similar. Exactly. Mindfulness, for example. It's this core idea in Buddhism, and it fits perfectly with positivity coaching. It's about being present, aware of your thoughts, your emotions, your behaviors without judgment. And that can be so helpful, especially for managing stress, reducing anxiety, just overall well-being. And what about Taoism? What are the connections there? Well, Taoism emphasizes harmony, living in sync with the natural flow of life accepting what is and letting go of that need to control everything. And that aligns beautifully with positivity coaching's focus on controlling what you can and letting go of the rest. So surrendering to the present moment, trusting that even amidst challenges, there's an underlying wisdom at play. Exactly. It's about saying, I don't have to have all the answers. I can just be present, be adaptable, go with the flow. It's amazing how these ancient philosophies are still so relevant today, maybe even more so now than ever. I agree. It's really inspiring to see how those ancient teachings are showing up in modern practices like positivity coaching. 
it tells you something about these principles, you know. They're timeless. They're powerful. They can really guide us toward a better, more fulfilling life. Absolutely. Now, are there any specific areas of life where you see positivity coaching having the biggest impact? You know, it's incredible how far-reaching the effects can be. But I'd say relationships, careers, and our overall health and well-being, those are the areas where I often see the most amazing transformations. So relationships, careers, our well-being, positivity can really make a difference in all these areas. It's yeah. powerful stuff. But I'm sure some people listening are thinking, okay, where do I even start? It can feel like a lot to take in. It can be overwhelming for sure. But the good news is even small changes can make a big impact. If you're ready to explore positivity, start by simply paying attention to your self-talk. That voice in our heads, the one that never seems to shut up. That's the one. As you go through your day, really tune in to those thoughts. Are they mostly positive or are they more negative? Are you your own worst critic or are you kind to yourself? Just becoming aware of that inner dialogue, that's a huge GE step. It's like we're taking a step back and observing our thoughts instead of just letting them run wild. Exactly. And once you're more aware of that self-talk, you can start to consciously change it. So let's say you catch yourself thinking, Ugh, I'm so bad at this. Why not try reframing it? Instead of being so harsh, maybe you say, you know what? I'm still learning and that's okay. It's about being on your own team, being your own cheerleader. We could all use a little more self-compassion. Absolutely. Really. We deserve it. And the more we practice that inner kindness, the more it'll naturally spill over into how we treat others, too. This has been such a fascinating deep dive. We've covered so much ground, from ancient philosophies to modern science, all pointing to the incredible power of positivity. It's been a pleasure exploring this with you. And for everyone listening, remember this. You have the power to choose your thoughts. And when you choose your thoughts, you have the power to shape your reality choose wisely. Choose positivity. Such great advice. Thanks for listening, everyone, and we'll see you next time for another deep dive.